Brock Hale will lead it off as we go to the top of the fourth, 1-1 the score in an elimination game. The loser is going to go home. Shockingly, the number one or two seed will be done after this game's over and the first pitch down low to Brock Hale for ball one. Brock had grounded out but did pick up the RBI to give the Cougars their one run. He is now 0 for 4 in the tournament. Pitches down low for ball two. I'll tell you what, throughout college baseball and all the conference tournaments this weekend, all the higher seeds have been getting upset early. It's been crazy. 2-0 pitch. That's over for a strike. Of course, the Cougars are still holding out hope. If they do not win the tournament, they'll get an at-large. I, I still got to believe they've got an excellent chance no matter what happens with their body of work. But, uh, boy, you just never know. As Hale hammers one, left fielder going back, and he's there and makes the catch for the out. Brock hit that ball hard, but uh, Fredrickson able to come over and make the catch. And, boy, that ball is just not carrying all to left field here this weekend. Yeah, just barely missed it with that changeup again. That was four straight changeups he threw that at bat. And you're right, the ball is not. It's a little more humid than we're used to. The ball's not traveling near as well as we're used to seeing it here. Jackson Clough, 0 for 5 in the tournament, climbs in, and he hammers one foul down the first base side. He's had a ton of those this tournament, though. He's hit a bunch of fa- balls hard, foul down the line. Had a couple of home runs yesterday, just foul. Just got to sit back a little longer. 0 and 1 to Clough. Here's the pitch. Down a little bit low, a ball and a strike. So Lardner against Easton Walker, and uh, both pitchers have done a good job through three. Clough, little fly ball center fielder coming in, uh, Morrison, and he is there and makes the catch. So two men out, and Austin Deming, who struck out looking, will come to the plate. Well, both pitchers now, after the giving up a hiccup in the first, have really settled in, Brent, and have just been mowing both lineups down. Deming comes to the plate. Playing at first base, Brian Sue out today. Might pinch run due to a little medical condition he experienced yesterday, as we've seen throughout his career. He's, he's okay, but just unable to play the game today. Tomorrow he might be able to play if the Cougars can win a couple here today. Swing and a miss. One ball and one strike to Deming. McIntyre has got three doubles in the tournaments up next. Pitch to Deming inside. So two balls and a strike. Sun-drenched day here at Banner Island Ballpark in Stockton. And that is a fastball on the inside corner for a strike. One and two. Seven in a row put down by Lardner. There's a line shot right at Yake. Makes the catch for the out. And the Cougars retired in order here in the fourth. We're through three and a half. One, one, BYU and Gonzaga on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Try Johnston steps in. He flew out to center field his first time up. 1-1 the score as we go to the bottom of the fourth. First pitch from Easton Walker down low, ball one. Johnston, Harris, and Fredrickson do up for the Bulldogs. Bulldogs come in 30 wins, 23 losses. 1-0 pitches over for a strike. Cougars come in 36 and 16. And uh, as the week began, the Cougars ranked 24th in the nation, number 37 in the RPI. Fly ball left field. Back goes McIntyre, and he is there and will make the catch for the out. Any ball that's lifted down the left field line just scares me because it's only 300 down the line. It does shoot out a little bit towards left center and gets to about 330, but you've just seen pop flies just get out of here in years past. You know, when we talk about the NCAA selection, a lot of it depends on upsets like you were talking about. Seeds that would have been, you would have believed would be automatic that aren't now. 
and somebody jumping in and taking one of those at larges. Yep, absolutely. Ball fouled down the right field line, and that uh, will be determined on Monday. Is that correct? The uh, selection. Yes, yeah, Monday morning. So the Cougars, uh, I think uh, Coach Littlewood believes, uh, feel a lot more comfortable. They could win two here today to get into the championship game. Pitch is over for a strike. Yeah, it's one of those deals where we, it's uncharted territory for us. We've never felt this way before, b being close. Our league has got multiple bids before. You know, a few years back, San, uh, San Francisco got in on a, on a second on a second bid, and uh, and their RPI was in the 40s. And so, 0-2 pitch, hit the Clough, throw to first in time nice for the job. out. Great play by Clough. Clough decided to go back it up and take it on one hop and you can do that when you got the kind of arm he has yeah. great play by club you know we have the we have they say we have the ninth rated conference in the rpi overall right but they have they have the mountain west right ahead of us at eight i don't really let that one because they're like a percentage point ahead of us but yet they only have like seven teams in their league so i mean if you took our top seven teams out record wise then all of a sudden yeah, our, we, we might jump. be in the six, probably the seventh best league in the country winning percentage wide and so Fredrickson steps in lines one off of Easton Walker's leg nice job. over to the third baseman hopefully Walker's okay Jacobson picked it up threw him out and Gonzaga retired in order one five three on the put out and we're through four all tied up one one Gonzaga and BYU on your new skin BYU Sports Network this is BYU baseball on the new skin BYU Sports Network now back to the ballpark and Brent Norton Mitch McIntyre steps in. First pitch grounds out to Nick Nyquist, the first baseman for Gonzaga. So one pitch, one out here in the fifth, and that will bring up uh, Ryan Sapiti. Yeah, hit it well, just right at him. Big body there, just kind of dropped to his knee and blocked it and got the easy out. Of course, the Cougars with the coach of the year in the conference, and uh, Mike Littlewood is seventh year. Brock Hale was the player of the year in the conference. So Petey pops this one up straight behind home plate. And that ball is going to be caught by the wow. catcher. Two pitches, two outs. That ball had a little spin, brought it back. So two men out, and uh, Casey Jacobson will step in. So as mentioning, uh, Rock Hale Player of the Year, Littlewood Coach of the Year. Clough made the first team. McIntyre and Easton Walker, both second team selections. Noah Hill and Brian Sue, uh, both honorable mentions, and uh, McLaughlin, the reliever for the Cougars, all freshman team. First pitch to Jacobson is over for a strike. Yeah, if you're Larner there, you just throw it right down the middle because you know he's not going to be swinging after you got the first two batters out on two pitches. Ball hit by Jacobson right at the center fielder. Center fielder Morrison in a couple of steps, makes the catch. And the Coors retired in order again here in the fifth inning. We're through four and a half, 1-1, one, one, BYU and Gonzaga on your All new skin, right. BYU Good Sports boss. Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin Brent Norton. Well, we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. First pitch is lined down the third baseline by Nick Nyquist, and that will be a double for Nyquist to lead it off. Yeah, that ball was just barely down the line. Probably about a two or three inches fair. So a double by Nyquist and Austin Pennerini will come up. He is uh, struck out looking his first time up. Normally not a guy that you would think would bunt, but they might bunt him right here to try to move that runner up. Middle part of the game, low scoring with uh, Lardner throwing it the way he is. And also Easton Walker are looking very good on the mound. And here is Walker's first pitch. Didn't show bunt, took a curveball over for a strike. Well, Pinarini does a really good job of at least pulling the ball here. You have a chance to sneak one through the four hole for a hit. So a lot of times they don't like him to bunt. They just give him a chance to swing away and try to get the runner over himself. Oh, 
and one here's the pitch from Walker, fouled off. So Easton ahead in the count now, 0-2. Oh 1-1 one, one the score. The Bulldogs have three hits in the game. Cougars with two. B-Way only had five hits in uh, yesterday's game against uh, LMU. And here is Easton Walker from the stretch. The 0-2 popped up foul out of play down the third base side. Well, the Cougars, uh, you know, when you look at it, the, the body of work over the game and a half that they've played, it's been all offense or lack of. Yeah, I mean, the pitching, uh, Wood pitched okay. You know, he made the one mistake. The bullpen gave up a couple of late runs, but, hey, four four, four, four runs. runs. That's but, about what you've yeah, been averaging. Yeah, and got to find a way to, to score more than they do. And you're like, you're like you said, the offense just hasn't been where they normally have been this weekend. Again, 0-2. Here's Walker's pitch. A little bit off the plate for ball one. Nyquist uh, doubled down the line. He has 51 RBIs on the year. He's now at second base. And Penarini, the senior out of Everett, Washington, steps back in with a 1-2 count. And the pitch. Fly ball down the left field line, hooking. And that ball's hooking foul by about 15 feet. Hit right on top of the wall at about 300 feet. It's exactly 300 feet down that line at the foul pole. So, you know, Jelich's home run up in Salt Lake, I think that was 312 up there. It's only 300 here. Well, big strikeout right here. You need a big strikeout or an infield pop-up just don't let him advance that runner. Easton Walker looks back at second. Here's the pitch. Ball hit pretty well. Jelich going back in center field, way back, and he makes the catch right in front of the wall. Runner will advance to third base on a ball. Hit right to the base of the wall at the 389-foot mark. Well, Pinarini did his job, and it's a fantastic job by Jelich to go out there and make that play and not turn us into a big inning. But uh, the Zags are able to advance to third with less than two outs now. And uh, you probably see the infield playing in here. Jack Crowell, this is a guy that doesn't have a whole lot of pop, hasn't played much. I think I would bring the infield in here. As the Cougars, a 1-1 tie. Crowell uh, flew out to... Uh, Left field his first time up. And Walker trying to keep that ball down, trying to get him to hit a ground ball. First pitch way outside for ball one. Jack Crowley, number eight hitter in the lineup for the Bulldogs. He'll be followed by Isaac Barrera. The uh, Bulldogs do have a right-hander down beginning to throw in the pen. The Cougar bullpen completely quiet. Bullpen sit back-to-back out in the left center field alley here beyond the wall. Popped up. That's an infield fly, and uh, Jackson Clough calling everybody off. He's there, makes the catch. Nicely done, Easton. Nicely done. But you can't relax now. You can't relax. You've got to go get this hitter right here. This is a big spot in the game because if the Zags get a lead, they're going to go to their all-world closer in Jacob who has like a 1-4 ERA who's just phenomenal. So you, you've got to find a way to keep that run off that, the board. That might be him down beginning to throw as Barrera steps in. Great play by Clufter. You can hear him in the crowd, Mike, calling everybody off. He took control and made that catch. There's a ball hit up the middle, and that is going to be through for a base hit. Barrera jumps on the first pitch, hits the ball right through the legs of Easton Walker, and Gonzaga ahead now, 2-1. to one. Yeah, big time that bat by Barrera, and that's why he's in the game right there. Dietz just puts the ball in play and lets good things happen, and, and Easton left one over the plate. He was mad at himself. He was punching his glove afterwards. I think he was mad because he didn't make the play. Yeah. I think he thought he should have uh, come up with that ground ball. 
So Gonzaga takes the lead here, bottom of the fifth, two to one on two base hits. And the first pitch to the leadoff hitter, Ernie Yake, is over for a strike. Yake homered in the first and grounded out in the third. Walker again from the stretch. And the pitch just a little off the plate. One ball and one strike. The winner of this will play tonight in the uh, third game of uh, today's session. The loser will go home. Curve ball up just a little bit high. Ball two. The loser of the uh, LMU St. Mary's contest, which is the next game, will play the winner of this one. So tomorrow there will just be two teams left, one with uh, one loss and the other one undefeated. Ball hit pretty well by Yake again. Right field, however, it's going to stay in the park as uh, Brock Hill makes the catch for the out. Zags with uh, one run on two hits, no errors, one man left. We are through five complete. 2-1 Gonzaga over BYU on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Carson Matthews steps in, first pitch outside for a ball. Cougars down by a run, 2-1 to one, as we start the sixth inning here. Matthews hits the ball right at the third baseman on a couple of hops, and Matthews is thrown out. That'll bring the top of the order and Jelilich up. Twelve straight retired by Mac Lardner. As Jelilich uh, steps in, Danny has doubled and struck out in the ball game. Yeah, you know, Danny, it's usually feast or famine. When he puts the ball in play, he usually gets a hit out of it. Third baseman in about even with the bag. And Jelich hammers one, left field, base hit. Left fielder picks it up and will hold uh, Jelich to a single. So Danny picks up his second hit. Well, he's and seen that will the ball bring well. Noah Hill. He's he, seen the ball yeah. well today, yeah. Good job, Danny. Be interesting to see if they have a little action here. Like hit and run? Yeah, hit and run action right here. Or just straight still. You know, we had five or six stills against the Zags that opening series. Pinarini's not the best thrower. Well, you got to do something to get some kind of yeah. action going for sure. Throw to first and uh, Danny Jelilich back in safely. I think as Danny gets more coaching and and just matures, he'll become a much better base stealer than he is right now. I agree, yeah. Learns how to take a lead, read a pitcher. That just takes some time and experience. There's no doubt about his ability to run. Well, in, in, in reality, for him, it's health, too. If he can just stay healthy. His back, I yeah. you know, has been an issue. One man out, Noah Hill up, a runner at first base. Another throw, and the Zags think he's going to go. Lardner uh, isn't the quickest to the plate. Now we're going to get the pitching coach out for the Bulldogs. That is uh, Brandon Harmon, seventh year as the pitching coach. That guy looks like he could go out and throw now. Yeah. He used to pitch for them. He is a – I mean, Lardner's a big guy, and uh, – and Harmon kind of dwarfs him. He's got to be about, what, 6'6", 250? Yeah, he's a, he's a big Doesn't kid. Doesn't look like he's got an ounce of fat on him yeah, either. Yeah, no, he's awesome. <laughs> he's one of my favorites. I worked at camp with him a few years back. He's an awesome individual, really good pitching coach. The Zags always have an outstanding pitching staff. And what they've done this year when they've lost their best pitcher in Legamina, he hasn't thrown one conference game in Legamina. You know, he, the last preseason game of the year he, that he pitched, he got hurt and hasn't pitched since, and he's out for the year. And... For them to be able to, I mean, he's an All-American candidate. Well, and he turned know. down a boatload yeah, of money yeah. not to sign last year. Yeah, so. Which is just very unfortunate for the young man. Hopefully that works out. 
The so ball down. hit foul hit down. down into the uh, right field corner. Yeah, talking to some of the Gonzaga people, they're just saying the, the pros are just taking a mum approach right now yeah. because they don't know what the problem is, you know, physically with him. And, uh, boy, a pitcher with a bad shoulder, bad elbow, you got to be awfully careful. 1-1 one, one the count to Noah Hill. And here is Lardner's pitch. That ball gets away from the catcher, and Jelich moves up to second base. Nice job, Jelly. Ball that bounced in, and uh, Pinarini knocked it down, but it got away from him, and uh, Jelich uh, heads up, moved uh, up 90 feet to second base. So a potential tying run now in scoring position for Noah Hill. Hill had a sack bunt in the first, lined out to the second baseman in the third. And Hill, big swing and a miss. One and two. Boy, Noah just got to back off that a little bit and just get the ball in play somewhere. Yeah, that's when you know you're just trying too hard right there. Yeah. That's not who you are. You're a line drive hitter. And when you're dropping to a knee swinging so hard <laughs> for a guy that never has hit a home run in his career, that's just not who he is. Lardner again from the stretch. Here's the pitch. Hill checked his swing on a pitch that was down low. Boy, this umpire sure likes to check to the first base umpire, yeah. like with some authority. It's not just a point. It's a full body motion, hard point, like trying to sell it like, you tell me. Okay, no. Well, and he, most home plate umpires want to be asked. Yeah, want yeah. the want the, op- you know, the catcher to ask. For sure. Because he's made the call. This guy wants help immediately. Two and two the count to Noah Hill. Here's the pitch. That's inside, ball three. Oh, boy. Close pitch on a fastball just off the inside corner. Yeah, must have been just down. Oh, it was down and in ball. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm just sitting here just glad he called ball. (laughs) Holy cow. Ball and two strikes with a runner at second base. Gonzaga leading 2-1. There's a quick throw back to second, and Jelic back in safely. Big point of the ball game right here. Top of the six. Cougars down by one. They have the potential tying run in scoring position, and uh, Noah Hill steps back in three and two the count. And here's the pitch. Hill swings and misses at a pitch. That was caught by the catcher, and he goes down on strikes, and that will bring Bach Hill. And again, that pitch is is uh, down and out yep. of the strike zone. Yep, it's ball four. A couple of times now on full counts, we swung at ball four in the dirt, just trying to do too much. It's okay. Take your walk. You take your walk. It's first and second, one out with Brock Hill up, the player of the year. Just trying to do a little bit too much that at bat Noah was. Hale steps in. He's 0 for 2. He's 0 for 5 in the series. He does have an RBI today. Brent, he's due. He I'll is say so he is due. due. Hit the ball so hard due. last time, but right at the left fielder. And here is Lardner's pitch, and that is down low, ball one. One ball, no strikes to the player of the year, Brock Hale. 11 home runs this year, 44 RBIs. This is the guy you want up in this situation. Playing Brock well over into the six hole, big hole right up the middle. And Hale takes that curveball inside. Well, first base open and a left-hander coming up, even though it's Jackson Clough. I think they're going to be pretty careful with Brock. Yeah, it's going to be. Brock's just got to get ball. a good pitch to hit here. Well, all, so far all weekend, it's just been steady taste of breaking balls. They know what he can do with a fastball. Here's the 2 0. That's a fastball over for a strike. Come on, Brock. Big hit right here. Team needs you right here. Big senior leadership. Two and one. Here's the pitch to Hale and. Fouls it off down the right field line. That's four straight changeups. That, well, he, was, he did have a curveball in there, so three changeups and a curveball. But, again, no fastballs. 
I wonder if he tries to sneak a high fastball by him right here to see if he'll swing through it because he's just been breaking ball, breaking ball, breaking ball. I'd like to see Brock just sit on that changeup and just hit it through the four hole. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. And here's the lefty's pitch, and Hale takes that one up high, ball three. That's what he tried to do there. He went with the fastball elevated. And now he's just going to go to his best yeah, pitch. He's it's, a, yeah, he, it's coming. Change is coming. Yeah, change you is know coming. He, he's okay walking here. First him. base open. Change is coming. He's going to try to get, just like uh, Noah Hill, going to try to get him to chase. See it up and own. hammered. If not, take your walk and let Jackson drive in a run. Three and two. Here is Lardner's pitch. Fouled off straight back into the screen. Elimination game here, Gonzaga and BYU. Loser goes home. The winner plays tonight as Hale steps back in. And the pitch. Hale takes that one down low, ball four. That's a good at bat. And just try not to do too much. He had a couple pitches to hit and fouled him back. Got to full count and took the change up down. Nicely done. And now, hey, it's, it's Jackson's turn, yeah. right? Well, he's your RBI leader. He's yep. 0 for 6 in the tournament. You think if anybody's due, it's Jackson Clough. So Jackson will step in. Tell you, that little short porch out there in right center field, Jackson should be all over that. So he steps in against uh, Mac Lardner. Huge six-hole open here. They have a shortstop playing up the middle. Good speed on the bases in Jelilich and Hale. And the first pitch is a curveball that drops in for a strike. He's so good at getting ahead with just a breaking ball. And it's not like a hanger that's down the middle. It's, it's painted outside at the knees. Makes it tough. Owen won the count to Clough. And the pitch, that's outside for a ball, one and one. Really good take. He wants you to chase that pitch. Clutch up right here. Been so good for us all year. And this is what you want, Brent, in this situation. These are the guys you want up to have a chance to tie or take a lead. Ball and a strike. And the pitch to Clough. Ball looped into left center field. Center fielder coming over. He's going to get there and make the catch for the out. So Clough flies out to end the inning. No runs, one hit, no errors. Two big runners left on. We're through five and a half. 2-1 Gonzaga leading BYU on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the ballpark and Brent Norton. I go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Guthrie Morrison will lead it off. He is uh, 0 for 2 on the day. Morrison is grounded out and struck out. Gonzaga leading this one by a score of 2 to 1 as we go to the bottom of the sixth. Both starters still in the ball game. Done a good job. There's a ground ball hit right at the second baseman for the Cougars, Matthews, and he throws him out. It'll bring up uh, Troy Johnston. Trey Johnston has uh, flown out twice in the ball game, once to center field and once to left field. Now that right field is Troy Johnston. Johnston, a junior out of Puyallup, Washington. Johnston batting from the left side. And the first pitch is uh, over for a strike. Joined by Jeff Toriel, Deputy Commissioner. What's the, what's the right title? Every you're, time I say it, you're too kind, Brent. Uh, let's go with Associate. Associate Commissioner. That sounds, well, I like Deputy better. Yeah, it but sounds we'll go fancy. I want a badge. <laughs> anyway, uh, in charge of this tournament, there's a ground ball foul down the line and count 0-1-2. Well, you got your number one and two seeds playing in the elimination game. A little, a little surprising, but that just shows you the – the good quality and the depth of teams in the conference this year. It does. I mean, certainly on paper you would expect to see this matchup today, but probably in the second game, not the first, but you're right. I mean, obviously some terrific pitching from both St. Mary's and, and Pilar yesterday. Oh, two pitches outside for a ball one and two. And I, 
you know, I've been doing this a lot longer than we've been in the West Coast Conference, but uh, I don't think I've ever seen a year where they're, the quality, the depth of the quality of the teams have been quite as good as it is this year. Yeah, it has been a fantastic season, and we've seen that not just with these four, but really kind of one through eight teams are improved. There's a ground ball hit down to the third baseline. Casey Jacobs up a long throw, not in time. That'll be an infield single for Johnston. It's a heck of a play by Jacobson just to slide and make that stop. Yeah, Casey, very fine defender down there for the Cougars at third base, so the Zags with a runner at first base, one man out. And Brett Harris will step in. Well, this is the is this the sixth year that we've had this at Banner Island? The seventh. Hard to seventh believe, isn't year. it? Wow. Yeah. Time flies. And and we have you know, and, and this is a beautiful facility and the Stockton Ports are great hosts, but the event has continued to grow and obviously still a lot of a, a lot of room for growth. But yesterday was the largest opening day crowd we've had in, in the seven years here. One man out, one man on, and uh, Brett Harris, who is one for two. There's a ball hit down to Clough. Under Clough's glove goes into center field. And the Zags with back-to-back hits. They'll have runners at first and third base. That's normally a play that Clough makes. But it just snuck under his glove. Might have been looking up to see where that base runner was. So runners at the corners for Gonzaga. And and you get the sense, Brent, that the the way this game started, I thought we might have ourselves a, a shootout here after that first inning, but you kind of get the sense here that one more run one way or the other might be, in the, might be the difference. Yeah, could make a difference for sure. Daniel Fredrickson now steps in with runners at the corners. Gonzaga with a 2-1 lead. Cougars now have a, a couple of uh, pitchers up in the pen. And um, Easton Walker right here looking for some kind of a double play ground ball. There's a ball on a safety squeeze. Throw home, and he is safe at the plate. The base runner missed the uh, home plate, and then he came in and made the tag, and I'm sure they're going to appeal this. As the ball beat the runner to home, the bunt was down the first baseline. Deming picked it up, got the ball to Hill on the safety squeeze, and now they're going to review that as uh, Noah Hill thought he had him for a very, very close play, and that's why we have that review. Well, that's exactly right, and this is something that the NCAA um, wisely has allowed uh, conferences to, to institute, and so here at this event we have the ability to review it, and we've got a, a seven-camera broadcast, so... Uh, There's no guarantee, certainly, that they captured a good look at that, but on a play at the plate like that, you would imagine they're going to get some good looks at it and and either determine that, yes, the call was correct, he was safe, or that maybe Hill did get him with the tag. Well, or you could also call that he was out of the baseline because he came a good six or eight feet to the outside part of the plate to get around the initial tag. That's right. And then dove back. So there's there's several things in play here on this call. That's right, and and this is one of those... um, the, the, by rule, again, this is all mandated by the NCAA, but this is not a play that a coach can challenge. But what Coach Littlewood did, which is correct, is, is he asked, hey, can you guys take a look at that? And, and wisely the, the crew decided to. And, you know, whatever they determine is what they determine. But the, procedurally they handled this exactly correct. And the coaches can do that up through the first seven innings. They have two, is that correct? They yeah, have so two they, chances. Have, they have two challenges, but there are certain plays that are – automatically reviewable initiated by the crew or there are additional plays that the coaches can issue a challenge and then the crew has to review it and then beyond the seventh inning the the crew can can review those other plays but this is one where coach littlewood couldn't challenge he just asked asked them to review it which they may or may not have done anyway but but certainly with the magnitude of this decision they've uh decided to go to the monitor well jeff uh, as the uh, as the tournament continues to expand teams continue to get better uh are there talks of any changes adding more teams to the tournament Uh, yeah there's a lot of those discussions so so really annually discussions vary from um you know is this the right venue should we look at other venues should we consider expanding the field should we continue to have a tournament or do we go back to the regular season those are always um discussions that are ongoing with the coaches group and then our administrators the athletic directors and ultimately the presidents the school presidents would sign off on any um, change, but you know. Well, the call is confirmed, and he is safe at home plate. So the Zags take a 
three, two, one lead. The runner was thrown out at third base by Noah Hill, so there are two men out and a runner at first base. And give Fredrickson the fielder's choice on the squeeze bunt and an RBI. And that will bring uh, the batter uh, Nick Nyquist to the plate. And a quick throw to first base and the runner back in safely. Well, it just seems like with the with the depth of the conference this year, uh, the quality of the team, the more teams you can add to a tournament, you know, even if it were two more, I think it would add uh, to the legitimacy, really, of the of the conference in baseball and give the teams a lot more to play for, a swing and a miss for a strike. And it also allows you to give the t- – the higher seeds may be a little more of an advantage. Yeah, those are those are certainly two arguments in favor of expanding the field, as this year in particular, our fifth, our sixth, our seven teams were stronger than they've been in past years. And so having them at this event uh, would be beneficial, not to mention, uh, as you said, Brent, that then if you expanded the field, your top team or your top two seeds, maybe depending on what kind of expansion you did, would have some sort of buy or some sort of advantage. So that in the case of BYU yesterday, you're not facing the pitcher of the year as the top seed. Now, you know, that will change, of course, from year to year. Pitch is over for a strike. Well, it definitely will, but but I think the consistency of keeping it that way, I think it helps recruiting. I think it helps everything. It helps the gate. I know sure. it's, it's a budget issue. There's no doubt about it. But holding it in this venue, most of the schools would bus into here, I would think, except for maybe us and, and uh, probably Portland and uh, Gonzaga. That's right. Ball popped up foul and out of play. Well, that's exactly one of the, the reasons that we, we chose this venue to begin with as a neutral site was, as you know, it comes down to the last weekend inevitably. So four days ago, schools may not know if they're in, so they can't book travel. And so for seven of our ten schools, this is a, a place that they can bust to, which makes it certainly more affordable. Well, two men out. Gonzaga has scored another one. They lead 3-1 here in the bottom of the sixth. Little pop-up foul out of play. Of course, those are the plans. And then this year, two of the four teams are two of the flying institutions in BYU and Gonzaga. But, you know, clearly the opportunity to play in the postseason and for whomever wins this event this week and and goes on to next week, and hopefully we get an at-large and we have multiple teams playing next week, you know, this is the format next week. So this, as it's constructed, gets you ready for the regionals next week. 0-2 the count. Two men out, one man in, and the pitch is just a little bit low for a ball. Well, it's a great event, great venue, no doubt about that. I mean, we've always had good weather here, and uh, the facility itself is uh, is top-notch. Yeah, and they've treated us really well, and, and the city has really embraced uh, having this event here. Another quick throw to first, and the runner back in safely. Well, it's been quite a year for the West Coast Conference with Gonzaga's run in the NCAA tournament in basketball. Absolutely. And uh, so uh, always a good year when you can get a team that deep into the tournament. Pitch uh, gets away from Noah Hill, and the runner advances to second base on a check swing. That is called a ball. And the count uh, now goes to 2-2 two and two on Nyquist with two men out, but now another runner in scoring position for Gonzaga. Yeah, it's been a fun year for the conference. I mean, BYU Volleyball, of course, going to the Final Four. We had uh, much cross-country success on the national level as well. It's It's been a really outstanding year competitively for our, our schools. So two balls, two strikes. As Walker trying to limit the uh, Zags to one run here in the inning. Zags have scored one in the first, one in the fifth. And one here in the sixth. Cougars got their lone run in the first. Zags now with three runs on six hits. Cougars one run on three base hits. And a pitch is over for call strike three. So the Zags score another run. They got that one run on two hits. No errors. One man left. We're through six. 3-1. Gonzaga over BYU on your new skin BYU Sports Network. <laughs> 